Now the video clip you just saw is from the future according to me here now because I haven't built this thing yet, so I'm excited to find out what you already know. Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to this episode of my Household Robot Project, where I endeavor to build a useful household robot. This has been a long journey so far, and it probably will continue to be because it's a tough mountain to climb. Now in the previous episode, when I said that I was rebuilding this robot from the ground up, I wasn't kidding. Literally, I started at the ground, and addressed some stability issues. Right now, Gort, which is the name of my robot, has a tricycle configuration, or sort of a reverse tricycle, where it has two drive wheels in front and a tail wheel. Now this is ideal in terms of ground contact, because all three points will be on the ground at the same time, no matter what happens below the wheels, if they run over bumps or anything else. The problem with a triangular footprint is that it's not very stable. I'm sure mechanical engineers have a term for this that I can't think of at the moment, but basically it has a very short lever arm between the center of effort and the center of rotation as it begins to lift a wheel. The obvious solve for this problem is to use a four-wheeled chassis. Now the problem with that is wobble. On a perfectly flat surface, four wheels is great. But, if you have any kind of bump, it's going to lift one of the four wheels. There's a few ways that this has been solved over the centuries of building vehicles. Industrial or agricultural equipment will often have a solid front axle that is pivoted in the middle, and it freely pivots one way or another. This is a fair solution. It gives the vehicle the flex, as the off-roaders call it, of a three-wheeled vehicle. But the stability of a four-wheeled vehicle, once it hits the limit of the axle's tilt travel, but I wanted to try to do better than that, and I came up with my own weird system. This robot will have four wheels. Each pair will be mounted on a truck, like this. And as it rolls over the ground, it can pivot around this hole. The two of them will be tied together with sort of an axle. And then there will be some link rods that require these two trucks to be at a certain angle relative to each other. And that way the chassis itself will have forward and aft stability and won't just fall on its face. At least that's the hope. Now as you can see I've already got the wheels and motors mounted to these trucks. I uh, did that off camera because I forgot to record it. But it's the same as in these clips of me trying out a previous iteration of the truck. It has since evolved to the point of actually being a single piece print instead of two pieces. I did that by shortening it by like half an inch. It still works. Now the next part I had to develop was a sensor holder for the odometry sensor on the wheel and some bump sensors and stuff like that. In all, these wheel trucks are going to have seven different sensors each. My CAD modeling skills have progressed a bit and I'm able to make wildly complicated parts now, just kind of making it up as I go. Don't ask me to do real engineering, but that part's fun, especially when I know that the 3D printer just takes care of the process of making it. Let me mount these up. They slip over the wheel. Just like that. And screws on. There it goes. Ugh, crackle, crackle. Now the way I handle mounting screws with 3D prints is a bit of a cheat. I do what they call match drilling, where I'll make the hole that the screw fits into in one part, but where it screws into the other part, I don't make a hole. And then I just sort of melt a hole with a hot screwdriver and screw the thing in in the right place. Come on, go in. It's matching the CAD model so far. Now here's the rear sensor holder. Wow, PLA smells a little bit like maple syrup when it gets hot. That's nice. Either that or it's a sign of insanity, which I will accept either. There. This side's done. Now for the other side. Where did I make a hole? There it is. 
Well, that's not in the right place. Well, that part's done. Now these trucks mount to the chassis with a large pivot point. This is a half inch hole, which is 13 millimeters for those who haven't walked on the moon. And uh, I happen to have a half inch piece of steel shafting right here because that's the kind of thing people have laying around, right? And it goes right in like that. And the other one fits on the other side. Now I'll have to refine this later on. It needs some sort of way to cap these on the end to make sure that the trucks are captive. But for today, this will work. And in the middle, this is one of my chassis plates. And it'll fit in here like... like that in between but it doesn't quite fit okay well I didn't have my motors in the CAD model so I have some clearance issues oh the joys of computer-aided modeling the end of this piece is supposed to slip underneath the motor and ride right up against this collar right here but it doesn't fit I'm gonna have to do some modification With that precision modification done, these can slide together just as they were intended to. Now it's time for the linkage that goes up here. That'll keep the uh, chassis from just wobbling forward and backward. Now as you may have gathered, the parts in green are actually alpha. They're not even prototypes yet. They're just there to check the fit as well as see how this suspension system actually works. There's another piece that's off screen right now that was actually printing at this moment and it helps support the large battery that this chassis is going to have to carry. After screwing everything in, it looks like it works pretty good. I got lazy and made the adjustments on the other piece with the bandsaw. This was very quick and satisfying. And with that done, it snapped into place with a very satisfying sound. Now it's time to test its carrying capacity and actually put the battery on there. The chassis is even more rigid than I had hoped. However, if it wasn't, I could always switch materials to a stronger one. Right now I'm using PLA and there are other choices that I could make for my print filament. Then it was time to commence with my first test. I brought it to my robot vacuum's Nemesis doorway where the sill between floors was actually quite a large bump. You can see here I have old cardboard taped down as sort of a ramp to help the robot vacuum get over it. It's looking kind of ratty now that I look at it this closely, but the robot rolled over it perfectly. If you look closely, you can see the articulation of the suspension, and it's working really well. After that, I tried an inclined plane. Well, it's a clipboard laying on the ground upside down, but you get the point. It rolled over it pretty well, and then kind of got fouled up on the clipboard, but wasn't stuck. After that, against my better judgment, I took it outside to Maine's frozen tundra and drove it around off-road so you could actually see the articulation of the suspension. It continued to perform very well and had excellent traction, given that it's very icy outside. Now I don't know if you can tell from the video footage, but that worked better than I had hoped. That was fantastic. Next week I will continue with the chassis build, finishing out the base and starting to get some sensors into it. And so far the tally on the number of sensors in the base itself is up to 30. I want this robot to know about its surroundings. So stay tuned to figure out what those sensors are and how they intend to be used because I actually have quite a variety and a couple of interesting little ones that will go into this.
Subscribe so you don't miss it. Unless you want to miss it, then go ahead and miss it. But leave a like on the video if you think it was any good. And uh, feel free to comment. I love to have questions and comments about my build. Just, or say hi, whatever. So until then, see you next time. I'm Joe.